Hello, I'm Ellen Vogel, and this is my show, Swallowing the Sky. Uh, I have a poem to read by a uh, beat poet, Diane De Prima. Uh, and she wrote this at the end of her life. And um, I'm reading it because I think it has a lot to do with creativity. It's called Radio Poem. I think I forgot to turn off the radio when I left my mother's womb. In Hasidic Judaism, it said that we are born an angel. When we're born, an angel enters the womb, strikes us on the mouth, and we forget all that we knew of previous lives, all that we know of heaven. I think that I forgot to forget. I was born in two places at once. In one, it was chilly, lonely, physical, and uncomfortable. In the other, I stayed in the dimension of spirit. What I knew, I knew. I did not forget voices. The world of spirit held me in its arms. Uh, she died in 2020 and was also Poet Laureate of California. I've been working uh, with newspaper for several years now. I feel like the news has started to dominate our lives. And there's, so I start with tearing strips of newspaper articles and mounting them on paper. And there's a practice in Buddhism called Tan Len uh, that encourages you to take in what's difficult, let it sit, and then breathe out a deep breath, uh, a request for a moment of silence, um, whatever you think is appropriate to the situation. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm responding to the news. This one I wrote, oh my to pay me whom, over and over again. Just responding to the news with what I consider a breath out. These are prayer beads made from particularly difficult newspaper articles um, that I collected and then made into beads. So this long one started with uh, the last presidency towards the end of it and then through the pandemic. So that's what these articles are. Uh, the bottom has salt and honey in the vials, the salt for the bitterness in life and the honey for the sweetness. This one was begun when uh, Ukraine was invaded and has continued on very unfortunately onto uh, articles from about Israel and Hamas. Uh, this work is a little more difficult to talk about. <clears throat> um, and I think of them as all tactile expressions. I use uh, materials like muslin, cardboard, <clears throat> excuse me, parchment paper, acrylic, ink. So generally all of them have some tactile quality to them. Um, I consider them a way to work with things I think about, so physicality impermanence, different elements. And I, I work with it in an intuitive way, in a way it becomes like a call and response, a dance. And for some reason, it seems to satisfy emotion. Helps me rest easier. Thank you. Thanks for looking. And I hope you get to come in person to beautiful Point Reyes and see the three shows that are up.
Hello, my name's Patty Trimble, and this is my painting exhibit. And it's actually a narrative. I've been reading Donna Haraway's book, Staying with the Trouble, and she calls for new narratives about, uh, regarding climate change, about uh, humans on the planet. So I thought I'd try to do that in paint. Uh, Haraway suggested we work with nature to try to tell a narrative. So I started in the forest, and I had um, experiences with the forest where I realized that the forest is this huge cycle that really you can't tell a narrative about because it exists in time. Forest is more about being than a story. So I tried to paint the merging of the burned forest and the green forest. And I went through this kind of thinking with paint project where I just kept painting until I figured that I was getting it. And at a certain point, I thought, you know, the forest, the green forest has the burn in its heart, and the burn forest has the green in its heart. And then I just maybe turned more attention on myself and humanity at that point, and just thought about that, um, you know, the forest's equanimity with life and death, life and death, really for 420 million years. So the next story I wanted to tell was with flower. And I began with the invention by the cells of the plant ovule. And these paintings, needed more of an imagination because I can't tell the story of flowers. It's way too complicated and long. This is one of the paintings from the flower series and it shows um, fossil flowers and Darwin's outline drawings. And I painted it because the flowers underwent a radiant evolution in which they co-evolved with thousands of species. And in reading about the flowers, I really am so astounded by their intelligence. Also, before I started this project, I had been painting humans, a narrative of humans, and I kept painting them arriving on Earth, so I decided to put some of those in the show. And it seemed to me that humans well, it's true that humans have only been here a very short time on Earth, only recently arrived, and are still astounded by nature. And then I began to think how we tell stories, and I felt like humans have landed also in story. And I painted two of uh, pretty common narratives. One is of Paradise Pass, and the other is of a chaotic or unpredictable future. And so I began to question Haraway's idea that if narratives are really the most important thing we need right now, I just don't know. And this is a painting from uh, two years ago I had, and I thought, you know, this is sort of where I am with this, that humans and plants live on the planet and the intelligence of plants is amazing and we're working to understand it. I'm Vikitsa and I'm having a show, Gallery Route 1, Vikitsa's Love Supreme. Welcome, come on in. Now I really worked on drawing musicians because it's my love supreme. I love music, love to dance, and I love to, I feel like I'm a part of the band practically. And I'm very excited to have been invited to draw in front of the Mill Valley Arts Festival music stage, which are the, paint, the painted drawings. I call them painted drawings. I do the drawing and then I take them home and finish with the painted part. So they're from the Mill Valley Arts 
festival music stage. And then the smaller pieces that you just saw were from the Dining Under the Stars in San Rafael, California on 4th Street. So I was invited to do both of these things and I've been doing the Mill Valley Art Festival for what, at least 10 years, I think. It's hard, I don't keep track of numbers, but I do love to keep track of musicians. I have been making fold out books at events and lots of places. I've done over 60 books and I'm particularly fond of the two that I have in this show. This one is the Hardly Strictly Bluegrass 23, which I've been doing a Hardly Strictly Bluegrass forever. And on the front are drawings that I do uh, in the place in front of the musicians as close as I can get. And people are really nice about it. So the other book is a book from New Orleans from the French Quarter Fest. I must admit, I got a little carried away. The book is seven feet wide when you open it up and flatten it out. And that's a pretty long time to be making a book but it's a free festival as our boat, and it's just a wonderful place to, to be, and it makes me really happy. So the books are a big thing for me, and people like them, and these are artists, fold out books that are limited editions, which I painfully put together. And on the back of them, each of the book, the B-side, is photographs that I've collected at the event and writing about it. So it just goes on. And I just wanted to say that this is a very fond friend. And I've become friends with a lot of the musicians as well. Wavy Gravy, great person. And Groovy, the bird of Judy.